In this video, we're going to look at one of the most sacred laws in all of electronics, and it's Ohm's Law. So Ohm's Law, in a nutshell, states that voltage is equal to current times resistance. But in this sequence here, we sort of prefer to think of it as doing one step of algebra, dividing, dividing both sides by R, and saying that current is voltage over resistance. So we're just going to sort of write Ohm's Law like that, because it gives us more of a sort of a reaction to some things that we'll see, and I'll illustrate that. So what it tells you then is a couple things. The first thing is it definitely illustrates that voltage, current, and resistance are very different quantities. I mean, they're so different that they even appear as their own symbols in this simple equation here. So they can't possibly be the same. Like if voltage was the same as current, this could be a V right here, and we could cancel in the out. Or if current was the same as resistance or something, the same thing would happen, or we'd get an R squared over here. But that just doesn't happen. They're just very different, and you need to start thinking about them as separate quantities and Ohm's Law might help to sort of flesh that out. So what we'll do then is we'll use this form over here, and the key thing that we want to notice about it, at least in this video here, is that the resistance, or the amount of resistance, is in the bottom of a fraction. So you may be very rusty on math and algebra, and that's okay, but just remember the way fractions work. Remember that in this bottom here, when the number in the bottom is larger, then the quantity over here is going to get smaller, because it's in the bottom right here. So when the denominator gets large, the overall fraction, which in this case is equal to the current, becomes small. Likewise, when the resistance becomes very small in the denominator of a fraction, the current will get very large. So what this law allows us to sort of think about in the technical terms here is how does the current in a circuit vary with resistance? That's what we want to look at. And we'll show you where the voltage comes in. So the way we're going to analyze Ohm's law here is we're just going to look at our very simple circuit. It's probably the most simple one I can think of here. It just has a battery with a battery clip, and we're just feeding a single resistor. Here's a jumper wire in here and just goes around here and back to the battery here. So I'll even disconnect it. And it's a rather boring circuit. You don't see anything happen. Nothing comes on. But our claim is that current is actually flowing because we have built a circuit. You see the circle. Current comes out of the red terminal of the battery through the resistor, through the jumper wire, back around here. And we were careful to make sure that all these columns are nice and lined up here on the breadboard to make sure that we actually have the interconnects going here. So remember here, Ohm's law has this current, this resistance in the bottom. So we'll just sort of write it up here. Looks like the other one's getting covered by the breadboard, V over R. Let's just see if we can make any sense out of that using this circuit here. So the first thing we'll do is we'll address what V is here. And V, it turns out, is the voltage that you've applied across your circuit or the voltage you've acquired, applied across a circuit element. In this case here, I only have a single circuit element, which is this resistor right here. And I have a 9-volt battery on it, so you can probably guess what the voltage is going to be, but we're going to go ahead and measure, measure here, just have a little exercise in making a voltage measurement here. So I have the meter, the clicking you heard was me setting it onto the 20-volt scale right there, so I'm ready to go. And what I'll do then is I'll go ahead and put my battery clips here, my clip leads here, and you can sort of see underneath here how I have the yellow clip going onto the red terminal of the voltmeter and the green clip going onto the black terminal of the battery. I'm just doing this for, so, for some convenience here. We'll sort of get in here, and I'll just measure the voltage across the resistor directly. So I'll clip one lead over there and one lead over there. And of course I'm getting about eight and a half volts. So I am using a nine volt battery for this. It looks like my battery is failing a bit, but we can keep going. It looks like it's stable for now. So about eight and a half volts is the voltage I have across the resistor. And that's just never going to change throughout this discussion. There's always going to be eight and a half volts across that resistor. So we're not going to worry about that right now. So it's about eight and a half volts. And we can just jot that up here if you want that this voltage here will be about 8.5 volts. Okay. So the next thing, what about that resistance now? Well, this, this equation says the amount of resistance you have is directly going to dictate how much current flows in the circuit. Now, we've done some stuff before with measuring current flows, and we're going to repeat that again now to sort of see what happens here. So what I'm going to do is I'll break my circuit again, because remember, current flows always require getting into that flow. So I'm breaking the flow here out of the resistor, and I'll send that into my red terminal of the voltmeter using this clip re lead right here. So it'll force the current to go through the meter. And when it comes out of the meter, it'll go, I'll send it into this wire right here, which allows me to complete the circuit. And so you can see that I'm sort of getting here about 8.79 milli. Oop, the meter isn't in the right position there. I was doing this wrong. We gotta switch over to current measurement mode here. And there we go. Uh, how about this setting right here? Yeah, there we go. So see, it still has the eight in it. That's why I was getting confused. And I'll show you where that comes from in a minute but we're getting about 85 milliamps flowing in here. And it's sort of no coincidence here that according to Ohm's law, I'm getting about eight, 85 milliamps flowing here for 8.5 volts. 
Why is that? Because the resistance in this circuit here is the 100 ohm resistor. I don't think I told you that through this whole discussion here. This is the 100 ohm resistor. This has a brown, black, brown band on it right here. So according to Ohm's law here, if I put the 100 in here and you divide the two, that will tell you how much current is flowing in your circuit here. So 8.5 divided by 100 is 0 0.0085, which is about 85 milliamps. So see Ohm's law is holding up for this circuit right here. But we didn't really want to have to focus on the calculations and just showing you that everything seems consistent with this simple division right here. If I apply 8.5 volts across a 100 ohm resistor, this is how much current will flow, about 85 milliamps. 85 times 10 to the minus 3 amps might flow in there. So what I wanted to emphasize more about Ohm's law is the fact that this resistance is in the bottom. You see, for the whole time, the voltage isn't going to change. I always have this battery right here. So but here, the, vol the resistance is in the bottom. So what happens to the current then as we lower the resistance then? So let's take out the 100 ohm resistor. I did say lower, but I meant raise. Let's go to the 2200 ohm resistor. I don't have a smaller resistor around anywhere. So we'll put that one in. This is the 2200 ohm resistor. This has a red, red, red band on it. So you can either use that or something else, but just make sure it's a little larger than the one you used, we used in the last example. And then what I'll do is I'll take that yellow lead and just complete the circuit by doing this. So see, I can see that the current has gone down. It used to be 85 milliamps. Now it's only 4.1 milliamps. Why did that happen? Because I made the resistance larger in the bottom. I went from 100 ohms to 2,200 ohms. The denominator has gotten bigger. That means the overall fraction, which is the current, must get smaller. And I'm seeing that happen right here. I still have 8.5 volts across this resistor. That won't change. But I've increased the resistance so the current goes down. And lastly, if I increase the resistance still further, this is a 10,000 ohm resistor. I have a brown black orange stripe on this resistor right here. I've stuck in the breadboard. Let me make the current measurement now. Of course the current's gone down to 0.9 milliamps. I've gone from 85 milliamps to 4.5 milliamps. Now I'm at 0.9 milliamps and I've just sequenced through larger resistances in the bottom of this fraction here. The voltage is the same but the resistance is increased so we see the current dropping all the time. I'll just connect the circuit back one more time and just to verify that the voltage across the resistor was always at 8.5. So there's the completed circuit sort of with the meter taken out. But now I'll click my meter back into volts mode, put it on that 20 volt scale. Let's just measure the, the voltage across that resistor there. See the 8.5 is still there. It looks like it's 8.7. My battery's being a little uh, flaky right now. 8.7, uh, which is about 8.5. So that voltage has stayed the same. So what I've done through this video here, throughout this video, I've, I've illustrated Ohm's law in particular though its ability to predict current flow which is inversely proportional to R. The larger R, the smaller current flow and we saw that by cycling through a 100 ohm resistor, a 2200 ohm resistor, and a 10,000 ohm resistor. We saw the current drop as the resistance went off, went up. And that is the epitome of Ohm's law. And that's also why we like to write it like this. I is equal to V over R. Because I feel like this is a more action-oriented form of the equation right here. Voltage is what I apply. That's my pump in the circuit. The resistance is what I build. And only when those two are brought together can I expect to measure a current right there. So I like to keep them over here. I like to see that R in the bottom so I get that variability as we demonstrated.